hello hello and welcome to another video right so in this video i'll be answering a question that i uh, received yesterday in fact the question goes like how do we trade news right how do we actually trade the fundamental news release based on the economic calendar right but before i answer that question i did a video a month ago over a month ago i did a video explaining the very same concept that i'm going to show you today so if you had paid attention to that video you probably would have uh, caught some of the some of the trades that we had yesterday based on the non-farm payrolls right but let's get to the video right or let me answer this question real quick so we need to have a game plan going into trading the news right so i was able to catch these trades right so firstly this is a usdchf we sold usdchf we bought uh, US 500 and we also sold USD JPY, right? And these were obviously not trades based on guesswork, right? There was a game plan in place that we had before actually what? Before actually taking the trade. So that is what I'm going to run you through so that you can be prepared for the next major uh, data release, especially for any, any, any economy, uh, but specifically the US dollar, right? The United States uh, economy, because we are we going to have uh, CPI coming up and uh, obviously you need to be prepared as well if you're looking to trade that right so I'm just going to take you through the whole process essentially of the game plan that you need to have before the actual data gets released so that you, when you come on to actually trading the, 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 the actual news release you are not panicking you are not anxious uh, but you are calm because you did the work beforehand right so this this is where everything changes right so you're not going to react because of because of how the market is moving you are going to react based on your game plan right so let us start with layering out the game plan so the game plan i shared the game plan uh, actually on, uh, on on linkedin so on my linkedin here as you can see we have N nfp right i was just highlighting there but essentially expectations right we need to know what is expected and then obviously we can get that from the economic calendar right so they're expecting 190,000 jobs to be added versus the 272 uh, that was added previously, right? Then unemployment rate was expected to remain unchanged at 4%, average hourly earnings to decrease to 0 0.3 month over month, and then average hourly earnings year over year. So so uh, this is information that is showing us uh, the wages, right? So giving us an idea of what is happening with the wages. Uh, that actually decreased, uh, the, the, that was expected to decrease to 39 from 4.1%. So essentially, sentiment is soft is for soft labor data. So essentially, it's, it's bearish sentiment for the dollar based on the expectations. Because if data were to come out this way, then it would result in a mute, uh, uh, mild sell-off in the United States dollar, right? Then, obviously... We, the second part is we need to have a clear understanding of the bigger picture, right? So we do, we do not trade fundamental news release in isolation, right? We need to have a clear bigger picture for you to be able to catch those trades, uh, the ones that we caught, which is USDCHF, USDJPY, and, 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 and uh, US500, you need to have a clear idea of what is happening in terms of the bigger picture, right? So with the US economy in terms of the bigger picture, I'm not going to read everything because I just want to keep this video short and concise and I want to answer the question directly, right? So you can just have a read on this, but essentially you need to have an understanding of, of how the US economy has been actually uh, developing or tracking for the past couple of months or the past couple of days and also the data that we, that we had uh, from Monday to Thursday, right? Because this was obviously yesterday, which was Friday for the non-farm payrolls, right? So... You can obviously read that, but what I'm going to highlight is this is this part of, of, of the actual bigger picture, which, which was in reference to the actual NFP, right? So the unemployment rate has been going up in April and May. If we get a jump to 4.1% today, 4.1% plus, so even if it jumped to 42 then the USD will sell off hot since a clear trend would be established, right? So it means we'll have three uh, data points showing an increase in what? In the unemployment. And then obviously average hourly earnings year over year had a clear downtrend before the May figure and month over month has been moving sideways, right? So essentially you can clearly see that my game plan or the main focus was predominantly on what? On the unemployment rate. If the unemployment rate went up, that is all that I was focusing on, right? Because so far, uh, uh, the actual non-farm payrolls figure has been coming out greater than what is expected, right? But I, obviously, with my understanding of uh, fundamentals, 
I knew that the market will be paying more attention to the unemployment rate. Why? Because if we get a if we if we get an increase in the unemployment rate, then it would mean that we now have three data points showing an increase, and that is how a trend is established, right? So it means that unemployment is in an upward trend. That is what I was focusing on, right? And then obviously, lastly, this is actually now how you are going to react. Remember what I said: we do not react to the news we react based on our game plan, right? So now this is how I'm going to react or how I'm going to trade. This is the surprise factor. So going into NFP data release, the sentiment is bearish for the USD, as we can see from the expectations, like I, like I showed earlier, right? So if the numbers come out as expected, then the dollar sell-off might be muted or essentially in mild, right? Mild dollar sell-off. We're gonna see weakening of the dollar, but not that much. This means we need to see the numbers weaker than expected and sorry, weaker than anticipated, higher unemployment rate. You can clearly see I keep on making a reference to the unemployment rate for a significant sell off in the US dollar. If the data comes out stronger than anticipated, lower unemployment rate, we might see the USD rise, but not sig significantly since most data this week showed a weakening economy. Right. And what data am I talking about? Obviously, if you read the bigger picture, US jobless claims, ADP numbers that came out earlier in the week, that is what I'm talking about there, right? But as essentially, even here, I'm also making emphasis to the unemployment rate. If unemployment comes out below the five, the 4% that is expected, then we might see what's strengthening of the dollar, right? And then the last, uh, sub, uh, the, the last reaction that I would have is if so this, these, the, the first two, clearly, if the data is weaker for the dollar, then I would look to sell. If the data is stronger, which means that unemployment goes lower, and if uh, non-farm payrolls figure comes in higher than what is expected, average hourly earnings come out higher than what is expected, all of those things are inflationary, right? So the market would view that, okay, interest rates should not go lower in the United States anytime soon, right? And that obviously would be a buy for the dollar. That's with regards to the, what, uh, to the, to the second, second part here, right? Then... The mixed, the mixed data might also result in USD weakness, especially if the unemployment rate increases. I want you to pay attention. I keep on making reference to the unemployment rate, right? Why? This is a game plan. So I go in there with a clear mind. I'm not emotional when I'm trading news because I have a game plan. And all I'm waiting for is for the data to be released. So that means that I do not enter before the news get released. I need to see the figure first and then react either in either one of these three ways right essentially here i'm just saying that if the data is mixed like the data that we got yesterday the data was mixed nfp nfp number went higher came in greater than what was expected but unemployment went up to 4.1 percent right so as you can see it has been going up since since april right from 3.9 to 4 percent then now yes sorry yesterday it went up to 4.1 percent so three data points are showing an upward trend in what in, 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 in the unemployment rate, right? So the mixed data, I also had a game plan for the mixed data that what I'll be focusing on if the data comes out mixed is the unemployment rate. If it increases, I'm selling the dollar, right? So now you can clearly see how I actually came, uh, came to this conclusion of actually getting those trades. So I was not just reacting because I saw that maybe the market is now falling, let me chase the market. No, I had a clear game plan and that is what you need to have, right? So. Watch the video that I that that I actually uh, uh, shared uh, a month ago. I was actually talking about the very same thing, but at that point we were trading. I think it was the United States PCE data, right? And I know and I looked at a trade that I also took on US five hundred based on that, and it was essentially the the very same sequence. But the main important thing is that you have a game plan so that you do not guess the direction or you do not react just chasing the market based because when the news get released there's a lot of volatility that's number one number two you do not enter before the news get released you need to wait for the news to be released for you to actually get a trade right and obviously it does not mean that you will catch every single move or every single data release but those that do line up will definitely pay you right and obviously you are trading or you are making an informed decision rather than just trading blindly, right? So now let's go to the actual trades, right? How I actually took the uh, took those trades. So essentially, the data came out, unemployment went up to four point one percent. That is what I was expect anticipating. So I knew what to do, right? And obviously, non farm payrolls figure went up as well from uh, from the expected hundred and ninety k. It went, I think it was two hundred and eight k or thousand, if I'm not mistaken. But then the previous figure 
of 272 was actually revised to 218. So that is, that's a massive drop, right, in terms of the revision uh, uh, number for the non-farm payrolls for May, right? So or that as well was also not that good for the dollar, right? So it, it obviously exacerbated, exacerbated the sell bias on the dollar. But essentially, let us start with the first trade, right? So, so the first trade we're going to look at is this uh, USDCHF trade, right? As you can see, this is the 15 minutes time frame. So essentially, here's how I did it. And, and I won't be obviously going step by step in terms of the technical analysis. Watch the video. I'll pin that video up on top, the video that I shared a month ago. In that video, I broke down the steps that I used from a technical analysis standpoint. But essentially, this is when the data got released, right? So right here. That is okay. This is the four hour, so that is why you're currently seeing 12. But when you go into the one hour, you're gonna have a clear picture, right? So it was before it was during this candle here, but we had a what we had a very clear demand zone here. And like I said, watch the watch the video that I shared a month ago to understand how, how I go about doing technical analysis when I'm looking to trade the news. Then, if we go into the one hour, so the data was released at this time, right? So 14 1400, obviously, which is south african time that 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 would have been half past two right uh so let us go to uh, the 30 minutes so you can clearly see so it's this candle right here as you can see it spiked into this zone right here and obviously because i had a game plan when i saw unemployment went up uh average hourly earnings came out as expected which means that they went lower from the previous readings then i knew that it was bearish for the dollar i also see, saw the revisions of the non-farm payroll figure so sell the dollar right nothing nothing complicated there nothing to over complicate right the numbers are what the numbers are you just need to get good at interpreting it and understanding the trend that has been that that has been in place so far but the may what i actually mean is the bigger picture is what makes the difference right have a clear bigger picture like i shared on that linkedin post so when it came to this i obviously this was my level where i'm looking to buy and now all i needed was an entry right and my entry trigger was obviously on the one on the one minute uh, time frame right so i got my entry trigger on the one minute time frame so initially you can see that the market spiked obviously a lot of volatility spreads spreads are wide right so i'm calm i know that i'm looking to buy so i'm just gonna wait for the market to get back to my zone again and then give me an entry opportunity and then obviously that came what over an hour later right over an hour later the market came back to my level uh closed with a bullish engulfing obviously I entered right so my entry was slightly higher yeah it was slightly higher around five uh five thousand five hundred and thirty four yeah it was slightly higher around that level here then obviously my stop loss will be around the lows and then target obviously I'll wait for the market to push higher and obviously with the target as well I explained in that video guys in the video that I shared over a month ago I explained the target how do you then uh identify the actual target right so okay let's go back to the lower time frame uh, so let's just drag this a bit. So that's essentially how I took uh, this this uh, this uh, US 500 trade, right? I know I should have been doing the, the USDCHF, but we are already on the US 500. So let's actually go to the US 500 trade. So as you can see, this is how I had this entry, 5,534. That is where I entered, right? And it's based on what I've said. But the most important thing is because I had a game plan, right? So with the, with the market spiking up and down, I was not panicking because I had a clear understanding of how the data that got released is going to impact the markets moving forward. Because remember, the markets move based on future expectations. Markets will react to the data today, but they will move based on what future expectations, right? So this is how I actually took this um, US 500 trade, right? And then obviously I rode it, uh, exited around this after this bullish candle here on the one hour, obviously. Look, if you look at the video or watch the previous video that I shared on how to trade the news, I showed you how I actually set my profit targets, right? But essentially, this was the trade. Then the second trade was obviously USDCHF, right? So when did the data get released? 1400 South African Standard Time this year, right? So same thing. I had this bearish or supply zone here, right? So I had this supply zone here. And then obviously I waited for the data to be released and for the market to come into my zone and then I look for opportunities to sell, right? So that is what happened. The market came into my zone, but there was no clear confirmation of an entry opportunity, right? 
So there was no clear confirmation of an entry opportunity. This was just the initial spike. So I waited for the markets to either come back to my zone or to close in a in a in a bearish or showing bearish momentum, right? So what happened was on the one hour you can clearly see that we closed as a bearish engulfing, right? So that for me signal that we had some bearish momentum, right? So what did I do? Let me just delete this. So what did I do? Now this was my new supply zone that I was focusing on. Now I waited for the market to get to the supply zone, show me confirmation or a signal to enter. And I got that on the 15 minutes, right? So on the 15 minutes, as you can see, when markets pull back, bearish engulfing here. And that is when I pulled the trigger, obviously. I entered, I pulled the trigger, and then my stop loss was slightly above there. And then obviously take profit. Obviously, you know, based on the previous video that I shared, how I actually uh, measure my take profit level. So this is the trade of U or the USDCHF trade. So as you can clearly see, it's this trade right here. So that's essentially how I entered. This is the 15 minutes time frame, And based on what I've shown you, that is how I entered stop loss above there. Uh, very tight stop loss obviously because entry is based on a lower time frame and then obviously the market just kept on falling right so that was how how i took the trade but what was the most important thing because i had a game plan that was the most important thing excuse me guys because i had a what a game plan right then let us look at the last trade which was usd jpy right the trade essentially is is, is still open uh, but obviously now it's a, it's a break even or risk free if I may call it. Uh, so same thing, let us go into the one hour, right? So when did the data get released? The news was actually released here, this candle right here, but we obviously had a what? A supply zone here, right? And why am I focusing on these supply zones? Because at that point, uh, I, I had a clear intention that I'm looking to sell, right? Clear intention that I'm looking to sell. Going into the meeting, based on the game plan, markets were expecting that, the dollar will be weak because they were they were expecting lower or, or weaker numbers for 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 the labor for the labor data right so obviously the game plan going in or the sentiment not the game plan sentiment going into the actual uh nfp data release was bearish for the dollar right and when i looked on my did my analysis before the, the news got released i saw that we had clear supply zone here right and then when the actual data came out i was like okay then i'm going to use the supply zone right so what happened same thing the market pushed up right so when the data let's go to the 30 minutes to have a clear idea so the data got released let's remove this the data got released here market obviously reaction bearish for the dollar but the market snapped back and started pushing higher i had a game plan i knew that i was looking to sell the dollar right and obviously this was my area of interest so when the market came to this level i dropped to the lower time frames right as you can see I dropped to the lower time frames. I used the one minute in this case. It was the one minute time frame that I used to enter. I had a bit of drawdown after my entry. So as you can see, this was the market came in here, bearish engulfing, obviously, pull the trigger, right? No hesitation whatsoever. Pull the trigger. And then stop loss was above here, right? So above this this zone here. That was where my stop loss is, right? And then Okay, let us go to the five minutes. And then let me do this. So essentially, this is the trade, right? So let's go to the one hour. Okay, let's go back to the five minutes. Let's go back to the one hour. Okay probably it's it's my settings yeah that's why this is not it's not showing on this one hour time frame uh, visibility oh, it is showing yeah okay let's go to the one hour okay so this is the actual trade right so now let's go to the screenshot and see if it is is, is it the exact same trade right so let's go back to the screenshots right there so as you can see, entered around the wicks, right? On the one hour time frame, And that is essentially how I took these trades. 
But the most important thing, as you can see, entry, entry around the wix. The most important thing here, guys, for that you need to take away is that it's possible to trade the news, but you're not going to get every single news release, right? Or get every single move, right? Those that do play out will play out well based on this approach or based on this strategy that I use when I'm trading the news. But the key thing that is important, guys, is for you to have a game plan. If you have no game plan, then trading the news will just be another guesswork for you, will be another mystery for you, right? You need to go into the actual news release with a game plan. Even if it's it's uh, CPI, US CPI, you, you, you do the very same thing. Have a clear understanding of what is expected, right? Or what are the expectations going into the market? How does the bigger picture look? Even if you're trading uh, UK CPI, how does the bigger picture look for the UK uh, economy, right? And then obviously, the expectations, right? In terms of if the data comes out this way, this is what I'll be looking to do because of A, B, C, D, right? The most important thing is that you have that game plan, right? So that is what I wanted you to take away from this video. And obviously watch the video that I shared a month ago, uh, where I was obviously talking about the very same concepts of trading the news. So that next time, if the markets do line up, you do not miss uh, trades uh, that can actually uh, benefit you, or you do not enter uh, prematurely while the market is still is still very volatile or there's still very wide spreads and then you end up uh, getting filled at a, at a worse price than you had anticipated have a game plan guys there's trading is not a it's 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 not a guessing game trading is not a guessing game you need to do you, you need to do the work do your due diligence and then be ready whenever the opportunities do arise so I just wanted to share this video with everyone and obviously uh, if you have any questions or you found if you found value from this video firstly obviously subscribe and like the video and if you have any questions just leave them leave them down in the comments and then obviously on thursday we ended our 12-day fundamental analysis mastery challenge uh and it was a, a big success it was a big success uh we're definitely going to have the next challenge but that will be or that will start on the 15th so on the 15th of july which will be a monday that is when we'll start our next uh, 12 day fundamental analysis challenge right but if you want to know more on that just join just click on the first link at the bottom which will be the linkedin right so not the linkedin the telegram link so it will take take you to the telegram group that we have it's a free telegram group there and you'll get updates on fundamentals but that is where you'll be able to get more info on the actual uh 12 day uh, fundamental analysis mastery challenge that is coming up on the 15th of july right but other than that i hope you found value from this video and obviously if you have any questions just leave them leave them down in the comments until next time guys cheers